is a bird's long night. Autumn has come to our land. Days have shortened. The nights are now longer than the days and will be so until spring. In olden times, when people lived more in touch with the rhythms of nature, these yearly changes signified a time of difficulties and hardships. It was difficult to live through winter's challenging cold and darkness. Thus, it is only natural that this dark time of year became associated with mortal fear. People's lives were indeed at risk, and they knew that their lives depended not merely on their personal health, on having food, clothing, and other essential needs. They knew that ultimately they needed to live in healthy community. The lively human imagination associated all these dangers with the image of a monster. Oftentimes this monster was a dragon. We do not see dragons with our naked eyes, of course. But does that make the dragon's threat less real? We do not see gravity either, but it is a very real force. Just so, the dragon monster exerts a force, a powerful force. But what is it? What dangers does the dragon monster threaten us with today? In his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Joseph Campbell defined the monster in this way. The monster tyrant is the hoarder of the general benefit, avid for the greedy rights of me and mine. The inflated ego of the tyrant is a curse to self and world. Self-terrorized, fear-haunted, alert at every hand to meet and battle back the anticipated aggression of the environment. The giant of self-achieved independence is the world's messenger of disaster, even though, in his own mind, he may entertain, entertain himself with humane intentions. My friends, the dragon today wants to make its lair in the invisible world of our own hearts, stoking its fires when we allow ourselves to be self-terrorized and fear-haunted. When we are readier to criticize than to understand, swifter to ridicule than to empathize, quicker to dismiss than to accept. When we divide, isolate, and disconnect from others, we do just what the dragon wants. We take from the general benefit. Our polarization and division destroys our communities and our homes. This is happening today. It is up to each one of us to meet these forces, to find the courage for kindness, the strength to love, even when it is not easy. The only Michaelic being who will save us is us being Michaelic. This festival is not about a religion, it is about a universal human truth seen throughout human history in numerous cultures. The monster's very existence requires a balancing force in the universe. 
as Joseph Campbell further noted, Wherever the monster sets his hand, there is a cry, if not from the rooftops, then, more miserably, within every human heart, a cry for the redeeming hero, the carrier of the shining blade, whose blow, whose touch, whose existence will liberate the land. Let us consider these archetypal images inwardly, so that we may each bring forth what the outer world so desperately needs. This is the noble battle for love and for light, a victory we must achieve every day. Knighthood by Carl Koenig. There are knights of the 21st century who do not ride through the physical forests of old, but through the forests of darkened minds. They are armed with a spiritual armor, and an inner sun makes them radiant. Out of them shines healing, healing that flows from the knowledge of the human being as a spiritual being. They must create an inner order, inner justice, peace, and conviction during the darkness of our time. They must learn to work side by side with the angels. In a kingdom, in faraway land, lived a king and his people grand. One fair daughter had the king, whom he loved above all things. This king was kind to great and small, and his people loved him one and all. But alas, one fear gripped all the folk, and none was free from its heavy yoke. For close to the kingdom dwelt a dragon fierce, whose fiery breath and claws would pierce even the bravest knight who came his way and tried with courage this beast to slay. Therefore, to save this kingdom fair, each day two sheep were thrown out there to calm the dragon's hunger pangs and keep the kingdom from his fangs. But alas, alack, soon all the sheep were in the dragon's stomach deep. So the folk found another way to fend off the dragon day by day. Each day a lot was drawn by all, and the chosen one set outside the wall. No man nor woman nor child could be spared, for each equally this dragon fate shared. One day the lot fell to the princess fair, the princess so gentle with the beauty rare. The king cried out, Send not my child off to the dragon, fiery and wild. But the folk said, Others too their children have lost, and all like you have wept at the cost. Bless me, O oh father, and do not weep. God above from harm will keep. Thus the, the princess, princess said farewell and went to the lake where the beast did dwell. The waters surged and heaved about. The dragon's fire began to spout. The princess looked upwards to the sun and begged. Ah, send to me someone who this fearful beast can slay and save me and my folk, I pray. Then from out of the clouds it seemed a white horse sprang which glistened and gleamed. And on the horse sitting straight and bold, a knight with sword of brightest gold. 
Fear not, maiden, your prayer is heard. Michael am I, guardian of the highest word. O oh, dread dragon, with this sword of light, I can conquer you in a single fight. Your scaly hide it can easily pierce, and drain the life from those fangs so fierce. But also to you a last chance I may give, to change your ways, and so to live, that the highest is served through your power, and a servant you become from this hour. Ah, uh, Michael, conquer from on high. If I but live, then I shall try to serve the princess as best I can, and with her every child, woman, and man. I'll plow the fields, plant and reap the wheat, so that she and all her folk may eat. Thus Michael held the dragon dread, and tied the princess's sash round his head. Then stood by as the princess led the dragon out of his watery bed. The folk were frightened this sight to see, and began at once all to flee. But from Michael upon his white steed, words came forth which all must heed. I, Michael, light guardian of this day, this dark dragon could easily slay, but rather let him with you dwell, for he has promised to serve you well. I take my leave now from this land, but if you ever need my mighty hand, turn your gaze up to the sun and pray for help and it will be done. When I conquer within me fear and wrath, my Kyle in heaven cast the dragon forth. When I conquer within me fear and wrath, my Kyle in heaven cast the dragon forth. When I conquer within me fear and wrath, my Kyle soars within my head. When I Conquer fear the dragon's chains I tightly bind. My Gaia's life within my mind. When I trust against the monster's pride, my Gaia is at my side. When I conquer with beyond the earth, I stand. My Gaia soars within my head. When I conquer, feel the dragon's chains I tightly bind. My Gaia's life within my mind. When I trust against the monster's pride, my Gaia is at my side. When I conquer within me fear and wrath, my Gael in heaven cast the dragon forth. Second grade and their Michaelmas dragons. Yeah.